the University of Wales has become a global business, but is it taking risks with its reputation? This is not the premiership of the world's colleges and universities. A respectable higher educational institution like the University of Wales shouldn't be touching them with a barge pump. Around the world, questions are being asked about the people it's doing business with. This college has been operating illegally. And I've got a few questions to ask this guy. And what about you yourself? Are your degrees all about board? Yes, um, sorry? Tonight, questions about the way the University of Wales conducts its business. Do you think that puts them up there in the top rank of university? No, it puts them in the bottom rank. I'm not too impressed. I'm not too impressed. It's not good for our reputation. Validation is, is a very risky business. Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Not the first place you'd expect to come for a Welsh university degree. But on the 15th floor of this tower block, you can study for a University of Wales master's degree in business. Hi, how are you? Very well, thanks, Dr. Faz. Nice to meet you. I'll be showing you around. This small private business college is named after its 32 year old executive director, Fazli Jacob. There are lots of photos of him around the college. That was four years ago when I had the uh, Albert Hall concert in London, so I had my hair long. Oh, right. So I, I've heard that uh, someone in the street, they said, what are you doing? We're interviewing uh, Fazley. They, they, they knew you. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, it's, it's such an honour. But they knew you as a pop star. Oh, do they? <laughs> That's how I started. So what, have you got lots of hits and things? Um, yeah, uh, 15 years back I started as a singer whilst uh, working and studying and all that. And I'm still singing, I'm still hosting a couple of programs. But besides his showbiz career, he's dead serious about the business of education. This college is one of over a hundred around the world which offers courses leading to University of Wales degrees. These are the same as degrees gained in Wales. It's almost our backbone uh, to be working with uh, University of Wales. But when you mention University of Wales, uh, the name Prince of Wales comes about. So His Royal Highness' name is always uh, mentioned by the students. Like being, It's a prestige being able to study in a program which the Chancellor is the Prince himself. So the University of Wales is good news for Fazli Jacob, but is he good news for Wales? I've been looking into Dr. Fazli's past and I've discovered he has a very awkward secret. More about him later, but this is not the only college where there's controversy. I spent months researching the University of Wales, and across the globe, questions are being asked about colleges it gets involved with. Questions that would make the university's founders turn in their graves. Lord Aberdeer, father of the University of Wales. In 1893, his university became the degree-awarding body for Welsh universities. It never had its own students, it just awarded the degrees. It was a massive success, adding more Welsh colleges throughout the 20th century. But in 2004, Cardiff University left, then Swansea, Aberystwyth and Bangor loosened their ties. Like many other universities, it expanded into the lucrative world of international validation. College courses are assessed by the university. Students on these courses are then eligible for University of Wales degrees. This brought in more than £7 million last year, making a profit of over £2 million. The university's pro-vice-chancellor says the money's well spent. It's a major business. We earn a considerable amount of money, but it's all reinvested in Wales. We make sure that that is what the uh, validation activity does. It, it actually adds value to things that happen in Wales. Leading education expert David Reynolds has concerns about these links. Looking at the websites of the places that are being validated, this is not the premiership of the world's colleges and universities. I wish it were. This is frankly mostly second and third division institutions. They appear to be, how should I put it, teaching shops. 
it's created a global network of colleges. Of course, any college who wants to run University of Wales courses needs to be checked out. University officials use this 300-page book to help them work out if the colleges and the courses are up to scratch. The book details the checks experts and officials need to make before a course gets the go-ahead. I'm going to be asking lots of questions about these checks, and I've found a few cases where they appear to have failed. First, though, I'm going to find out what these colleges actually teach. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Here in Denmark, a college which runs University of Wales degree courses believes the Bible is the literal truth. Without the University of Wales, it wouldn't be able to offer degrees. The people behind this institution had a uh, high view of the Bible in the sense that they uh, believed it to be the Word of God, that it's trustworthy and you can uh, trust what it says about the things that it says something about. And uh, that has been uh, part of the, the basis on which the institution has been built ever since. That means that biblical writings on some contentious issues are taken literally. As far as I can see, the texts actually do say pretty clearly that homosexual praxis is a sin. And uh, so when I say that I believe that the Bible is true and actually is a revelation of God, yes, I would, I would say that. I asked him if his literal view of the Bible got in the way of academic rigor. I don't see that it disqualifies me academically that I, when I read Paul speaking about homosexuality, I try to interpret him and actually finding out what he actually does say. But other Danish academics have been infuriated by the University of Wales' involvement. The criticism isn't coming from hardened atheists, it's coming from leading Christians here in Denmark. I've travelled to the far north of Denmark to meet a university theologian who preaches at this church. Welcome. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm Ilse. Let's go in. She's not much impressed with the Dansk Bible Institute. They've got a statement of beliefs. Why does that matter? It matters because it prevents the students from being open-minded, being uh, adapted to a modern world. And there are matters which cannot be discussed. And in an, in acad in an academic environment, everything should be discussable. Everything should be criticised. What they're saying is that the Bible is the word of God, acclamation mark. No more, no less. And that means that you cannot do a free and open-minded research on it. There would be things which were kind of decided from the beginning. And what's your impression of the University of Wales? I'm not too impressed. I'm not too impressed. But it seems the university was impressed with the Dansk Bible Institute. They challenged us on different uh, issues, both in the content of the program, but also the way we uh, established um, rights for students and so on. Of course, this whole validation setup also includes that every year we'll have um, meetings that are concentrated on how do we develop the program, how do we de develop the institution. What did the University of Wales get out of this relationship? What's in it for them? Money. <laughs> I've been doing a bit of homework on these Bible colleges. It's not just in Denmark that the University of Wales is validating courses at colleges that believe the Bible is literally true. In Belgium, there's the Continental Theological Seminary, and that's part of the American Pentecostal movement. Followers believe that they speak in tongues when they are filled with the Holy Spirit. I've got hold of an application form for the college, and looking through this, they want to know an awful lot more than just what you got for your A-levels. 
This bit here wants to know if you ever talked in tongues. They want to know what church you and your parents go to. And they also ask you if you've ever behaved in an immoral way. They even ask if you've ever smoked. They've told us that nobody has ever been turned away because of their answers to these faith questions. The fact colleges like this are allowed to run University of Wales courses has angered some academics in Britain. AC Grayling is a leading humanist. I know that these colleges claim that they're academically rigorous because they teach ancient languages like Biblical Greek and Hebrew and because they look for and discuss the uh, quote-unquote contradictions in the Bible. But th this is a fig leaf. They're there to train advocates for the Biblical message. And that is absolutely not, by a very, very long chalk, what a university should be involved in doing. But I think there are two problems here. And the biggest problem from our point of view is that a respectable British institution institution, higher education institution like the University of Wales should be anywhere near these, these people. You shouldn't be touching them with a barge pole. That's his opinion. I would say that they're validated to the highest standards. They match what are called QAA benchmark statements. Uh, we have serious academics looking at them from Russell Group universities, for example, uh, and their academic standards are established at the very highest level. But the University of Wales has now told me that it's dropping its links with the Dansk Bible Institute because it says it no longer wishes to validate courses in Danish. Bible colleges are not the only controversial area in which the university offers degrees. In Barcelona, you can study for a University of Wales Bachelor of Science